hepatitis Savory, perhaps the first high-efficacy disease-modifying therapy for multiple sclerosis safe enough for regular use, but it still has significant side effects. In this video, I'm going to tell you how it works and talk about the side effects paying particular attention to PML. Let's have some fun. I'm Brandon Bieber. I make videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday, so please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Now, when Tysabri first came onto the market in 2005, there was a tremendous amount of excitement around this medication. It was thought that this is much more effective than interferons and glitiravir. And unlike Novantrone, mitoxantrone, it doesn't have the same degree of risk. Unfortunately, our hopes were dashed when the first few cases of PML were reported. PML is an acronym for Progressive Multifocal Leukoencephalopathy, a rare infection caused by the JC virus that is associated with this drug. And we'll talk about that along with the other side effects of Tysabri. But first, I wanna talk a little bit about how it works. Now, Tysabri is indicated not just for multiple sclerosis, but also has FDA approval for Crohn's disease. And it turns out the protein that Tysabri binds to, which is alpha-4 integrin, is also in the gastrointestinal tract, and that's the reason it's used for that disease. The typical dose used for Tysabri is 300 milligrams intravenously once every four weeks or 28 days, although there's some evidence that the risk of PML can be reduced by giving it less often. So some doctors will give it every six weeks or even every eight weeks, particularly if you've been stable on it for a long period. Now, the way it works, and I'll show a picture of the next slide, is it essentially blocks a certain type of white blood cell called lymphocytes from getting into the central nervous system. So it doesn't destroy the nervous system, excuse me, the immune system. It just prevents it from entering the brain, optic nerve, and spinal cord. And so it's considered to be like an immunosequestrant. It sequesters the immune system out of where you don't want it to be. So Tysabri, or natalizumab, is itself an immunoglobin. Specifically, it's an IgG4 kappa, and it, it binds to a protein called alpha-4 integrin. Alpha-4 integrin normally interacts with another protein called VCAM1, and this interaction allows lymphocytes to enter the central nervous system. So it disrupts the interaction that allows lymphocytes to enter the nervous system. So this is a picture of normal lymphocyte entry into the central nervous system. Basically, if you look at the panel to your left A, you can see the lymphocyte, the white blood cell, and the proteins on the surface of that white blood cell called alpha-4 integrins are going to interact with the proteins on the surface of the endothelial cells of the blood-brain barrier and they will interact and bind. And then in panel C, that lymphocyte will diapedes, in other words, go between the cells to enter the central nervous system. And Tysabri blocks this from occurring. And if you look at the molecular level, this is what's happening. And you can see in the left upper corner, the lymphocyte with alpha-4 integrins normally interacts with VCAM1 and Tysabri blocks this so it cannot occur. Now, what are the side effects? First, I'll list them and then I'll talk about them individually. The big side effect we're all concerned about is PML. That stands for progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, which is a rare but serious and potentially fatal and disabling infection of the brain by the JC virus. And we'll talk about the JC virus in a little bit. But it has other side effects. Sometimes it can cause anaphylaxis, a very severe systemic allergic reaction hepatotoxicity or liver toxicity. Other infections have been reported with Tysabri. There are special considerations for breastfeeding and pregnancy. There's a potential theoretical risk of melanoma with Tysabri because the protein alpha-4 integrin has been found on melanocytes or the normal pigmented cells in the skin. Other cancers have been associated with Tysabri, but it's unclear if Tysabri really increases the risk or if these are just sort of naturally occurring cancers that could have occurred anyways. And there are certain blood test abnormalities that have been seen with Tysabri. Now, the boxed warning, the black boxed warning of Tysabri talks about PML, so I'll focus a lot of attention on that. So what is the JC virus? This is the John Cunningham virus, 
and it's in a group of viruses called polyomaviruses, similar to BK viruses, which are associated with kidney transplants. We don't really know where it comes from or if it's spread from person to person. It's been found in urban sewage. It possibly infects the tonsils and the gastrointestinal tract before it enters the bloodstreams. And we've seen the virus in the urine of pregnant women. And we know that pregnant women are mildly naturally immunosuppressed, which may be why they shed the virus. The virus binds to a serotonin receptor, 5-HT2A, which is actually why the drug mirtazapine, which is normally an antidepressant, has sometimes been used to attempt to treat the infection PML. Now, this is what JC virus infection looks like under the microscope. Basically, it affects the glial cells or the sort of helper cells in the nervous system. And you can see these dark intranuclear inclusions within the cells. And this is what PML looks like on MRI. It can be confused with lesions caused by multiple sclerosis, but it tends to sort of fill up the gyri and spread slowly from a central area. And the symptoms it tends to cause are sort of slowly progressive worsening symptoms that could easily be confused for a multiple sclerosis relapse or a multiple sclerosis progression. And some of the common symptoms would be like cognitive symptoms, but also it can cause weakness or numbness or anything else that multiple sclerosis can cause, although it usually would not involve the spinal cord and it also usually would not cause optic neuritis. It can affect vision by infecting the occipital lobe, but it usually would not infect the optic nerve. Now, what is your risk of PML? It turns out the main risk factor is whether or not you test positive for this blood test called the JC virus antibody. So that's the main risk factor. And if you test negative, the risk has been reported to be approximately one in 10,000 risk. Now, some people choose to be on the medication even if they test positive. However, the risk increases if the level of the antibody is higher, known as the JC virus antibody index, which we test for routinely. And also the risk is higher if you take the medication for longer, and the risk is higher if you've been exposed to other medications which weaken the immune system. And you can sort of follow this flow chart and estimate your risk. And in the description below, I'll go ahead and post a link to a website that allows you to estimate your risk. Although I would suggest talking with your own provider about your own specific situation. Now, PML more typically causes what I showed you on the MRI earlier, but occasionally it can be a very localized infection to the cerebellum. There are these granule cells within the cerebellum and a granule cell neuropathy has been reported that really doesn't cause PML. It doesn't cause multifocal leukoencephalopathy. It's isolated to the cerebellum and can cause a slow onset progressive clumsiness. And really the only way to test for this is actually to do a spinal tap. And so it's been associated with a very specific JC virus VP1 gene mutation. So it's important to be aware as I said, it can also cause other side effects. One is anaphylaxis, which is quite rare, less than 1% risk. Usually early on, like the first few infusions, though there have been rare case reports on later infusions. And even if you don't get anaphylaxis, you can develop antibodies against the drug. And sometimes these antibodies don't really cause any symptoms, but sometimes they can actually make the drug less effective. And if someone has a relapse or new MRI lesions on Tysabri, sometimes we can find that they have anti-Tysabri antibodies. And that's actually possible to test for these if we really want to know. Milder reactions can occur also, things like rigors, hives, flushing, shortness of breath, itching, and that kind of thing. Liver toxicity is rare, but can occur. And there have been a small number of cases that have occurred even when the drug is withdrawn and the patient is rechallenged. There was also one case of CMV, cytomegalovirus infection, causing inflammation of the liver. And there's even been a case of liver failure requiring liver transplant with Tysabri. Now, this is extremely rare, but it's been reported that there's this unusual autoimmune hepatitis where lymphocytes and plasma cells sort of invade the liver and cause fibrosis of the portal portal uh, bridging veins. And it's very rare, but it's to know about it. And this is sort of what it looks like under the microscope. You see these extensive plasma sites infiltrating the liver. I've never seen a case of this in my career or even had a colleague who experienced this, but it is a known but rare side effect. There are other infections that have been reported with Tysabri. So 
it's ISABRI prevents the immune system from surveilling the brain, potentially any central nervous system infection is possible. What we're most worried about is PML, but there have been rare case reports of herpes encephalitis or varicella meningitis encephalitis, meningoridiculitis, meningomyelitis. Again, very, very rare, but they have been there are other infections that have been reported, like pneumonia, aspergillosis, uh, pneumocystis givarechii pneumonia, varicella pneumonia, CMV colitis, um, and other things. But these are extremely rare, and in many cases, there were other confounding factors. It's a little bit unclear if they were directly related to, to Tysabri itself. Uh, there have been other common infections. For instance, there may be a slightly increased risk of vaginal infections. It's definitely been reported that dental or gingival infections are a little bit more common on Tysabri. And there was actually one report that suggested serious pneumonia specifically were slightly more common with Tysabri compared to placebo. Although if you look at the overall rate of infections, it seems to be about the same as placebo. And that makes a lot of sense because Tysabri doesn't really weaken the immune system overall. It just sort of sequesters the immune system outside of the central nervous system. Now, what about pregnancy? It turns out that the, the receptor that Tysabri indirectly interacts with is on newborn B and T lymphocytes. And so potentially it could affect the newborn as well. Now, it doesn't seem to cause like DNA mutations, so it wouldn't likely cause birth defects in the traditional sense. But in animal studies, it increases the risk of spontaneous abortions. And there have been reports of fetal anemia, low platelets, and large spleen, uh, reduced liver and thymus weight in animals. So it's considered to be possibly unsafe in pregnancy and generally not recommended. In breastfeeding, we know that Tysabri does enter the breast milk in small amounts, and the safety is really unknown. Generally speaking, it's not recommended in breastfeeding, except possibly in extreme circumstances. Melanoma is a possibility. There have been cases of malignant melanoma associated with Tysabri. It's not exactly known if Tysabri increases risk compared to the general population. And there have been other reports of cancers, although if you look at this list, a lot of these cancers are quite common, breast cancer, cervical cancer, colon cancer. So it's a little bit unclear if they're really related to Tysabri or if they're just cancers that people would have gotten anyway. There are certain laboratory abnormalities that have been reported. For instance, thrombocytopenia or low platelets, sometimes causing serious bruising. And this usually happens early, but occasionally it could happen later. We usually test the liver function test with Tysabri. Now, one normal effect of Tysabri is that it can elevate the white blood cells. So when you we check the routine blood counts in people taking Tysabri, the white blood cells will normally be a little bit high. But that's not because there are more white blood cells. It's just because they're trapped outside of the gastrointestinal tract and outside of the central nervous system, so they appear higher in the blood. This is just a benign, routine, common finding, nothing. So that's all I have on Tysabri safety. I know it's a little bit complicated, but the more informed you are, the better decisions you'll make. If you post questions in the comments below, I'll try to answer them. But if you have very specific questions relating to your specific situation, I would suggest that you talk to your provider. I'll also go ahead and add some references just so you can see where I looked up some of this information.